In part six, beyond the distortion of the rainbow, I want to get into this true image of God in humanity, this image of God that's been distorted along with our image with this transgender movement. I had mentioned part five of this series, Beyond the Distortion of the Rainbow, that beyond this point, it would get really scary. Well, it's not my intent to scare anyone, nor is it God's. Yet what you will hear might be scary to the secular self-righteous religious world. In that light, be afraid. Because that image of God has been so distorted over the last 2,000 years after the Apostle Paul had manifested the mystery, expressing as Christ Jesus our Lord, the mystery revealed. A whole series of videos that bring this out. It's deeper than most have thought and is the main reason for today's distortion of genders. It comes down to the cutting off of humanity from our Father's image of Him and all of us as His offspring. So here in this video, our Father is going to take from Genesis and other texts for the skeptic who might doubt this, what our Father is saying to those who so distorted this image with their self-righteous religious ideas, he would say, be afraid. And we wonder why the world is so messed up today. Once the very image of God gets distorted, what were you expecting? So open your eyes and ears to what the Father is trying to share to us today. With him reinstilling this mystery and our responsibility to keeping this mystery untainted, not distorted as it has become. Think of the following text in light of what you are about to have revealed to you. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 13. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Now this word reprove, here's how it's divine. Express this approval to or of. This approval of or to. To criticize adversely. Especially in order to warn of or to correct a fault. This is a warning, the correction of this image we've distorted, secular and religious world, sadly. Remember what Jesus has said concerning the light. You read it in Matthew 6, 23. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Here is the true light manifested for you, the reader, getting beyond the debate over create or make, bara Absal in the Hebrew, using the word manifest or manifested. Here's an example of what I mean. In Mark chapter 4, verse 22, for there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. Neither was anything kept secret, but that should come abroad. Jesus is saying that the mystery which was once hidden would be revealed, which was by the Apostle Paul. See my videos on the mysteries, or better yet, ask your father, where do you think I'm getting it from? Where do you think the Apostle Paul got from it? He was one commissioned to reveal it. 
It wasn't his ideas. Now notice how it comes plain when the word manifest is used in place of create or make in the book of Genesis. Genesis 1, 27. So God, the King James has created, so here it's this way, so God manifests man in his own image, slowing us down, in the image of God manifested he him, male and female manifested he them. Now notice, reading this right, how Adam was first manifested in his image, God's image. God's male and female. It was a mystery to Adam. All he could see was male. Remember, judging the animals? He kept seeing male, female, male, female, male, female. That's how I know it was a mystery that time. Because he would have known. But he didn't know. And God says, it's not good that man be alone. There's a lot to that word, alone. He's not alone. Why do you, would he feel alone? He has God the Father. He's missing this aspect of his spirit and his understanding. So notice reading this right, how Adam was first manifested in his image, God's image, male, female. He was just expressing the masculine of that spirit. The human spirit is androgynous. It's male, female. The flesh is only male, female, separated. So, Adam was first manifested in his image, a mystery to Adam at that time. Now, as our father has been sharing, which some might call heresy, because it sounds like heresy. I wrestled with this for years. How that the spirits of Adam and Eve were androgynous, male, female, a mystery to them. Yet when their spirit came into a physical body, their spirit took the role that their physical body dictated for them to express. They did not seek to change their body parts or their roles. Yet once the lie entered the picture, and Adam and Eve were cut off from their spirits, the fallen corner of mind could not see what once their spirit could see and have worked out of them. It would have worked it out. But it went off half-cocked, independent from God, and get past this tree of the wisdom of knowledge of good and evil, He's saying, in essence, they went off to try to figure out life apart from their spirit, which the Holy Spirit would have worked out on and went with this fallen rogue soul cut off from God. Their spirits made that mind of that body alive. It was a living soul. Well, once they cut themselves off from the life-giving spirit of their spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit, that soul began to die. And as the mind goes, so goes the body. That's why we all die. Now, catch the following point from Genesis chapter 5, verse 2. Male and female, now getting word of that word created, male and female manifested he them and blessed them both and called their name, here it is, their name Adam. Yeah, but that was Adam. He was, that was Eve. Why would he call them both Adam? <laughs> Figure that one out. And call their name Adam, which we will here in a minute. It comes out in the Hebrew text. In the day when they were created or manifested, they were manifested as an Adam. Their name was Adam. Okay, maybe we don't want. No, he called them Adam. Now, catch in Hebrew is translated man or mankind. 
Now here's for the skeptics. This is from Strong. Adam, mankind. There it is. I mean, this, I'm not going to read all of this. Part of speech, um, the noun, mask, and remembering the Old Testament, the mystery was hidden. So they lived in the carnal ideas of man being a male individual. In the Hebrew, it also translated mankind or humanity, consisting of male, female individuals. So there's the phonics spelling of Adon, definition man, male, female. But I'm a skeptic, here it is. So in this light, every time you read the term man or Adam, think of it as Humanity. Humanity in their spirit are both male, female. Genesis 1.27. We just said it. This was a mystery to Adam and Eve and sad, sadly too many did today. It was held a mystery until the Son of God was manifested as a Son of Man. Humanity. The second Adam. Humanity, new creation, new to us. As scripture clearly tells us, later the Apostle Paul was commissioned to reveal this mystery of how all of humanity, mankind, man, Adam, unaware, are the offspring of God. Acts 17, Paul brings that out. It's come out in this whole series. Something Beyond our ideas of divisions of male, female, Greek, Jew, barbarian, sentient, bond of faith, circumcised or uncircumcised, male, female. Something that our carnal minds, our eyes have never seen, nor has our ear ever heard, nor has it entered into the fallen carnal mind those things that God had eternally prepared. So it is your carnal mind, this self, that's telling you this is heresy. I guess it would. This self that was commanded to surrender to God and do so, we would be resisting the devil and he would flee from you. So are you going to reject this? Now here's the scriptures for all this, for the skeptic. It's coming out in the other videos, it's coming out in this series. First Corinthians chapter 15, the resurrection chapter, verse 15, verse 45. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, humanity, was made, manifested, a living soul. And the last Adam, humanity, was made, manifested, a quickening spirit. Everything I just said. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has entered into the hearts of men, humanity, the thing which God has prepared for them that love him. Now, this is Paul quoting from Isaiah. So, I mean, this New Testament truth is Old Testament truth. Isaiah was saying the same thing, but the Isaiah was a mystery to him. Isaiah 64, verse 4. For since the beginning of the world, man, men, humanity, have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither have the eyes seen, O God, beside thee, what he had prepared for them that waited for him. We wait to the Spirit, remember? No, we wait to our Spirit, as Scripture instructs us. What do you think Isaiah got this? He got it from his Spirit, unaware to him. This mind of Christ wasn't this uh, witty mind of Isaiah. God will come upon him with the Spirit, stir the mind of Christ in him and his human spirit, and he was able to hear from the Father. And he would say what the Father would say, want him to say, and do what the Father told him to do. Then the Spirit back then would leave to keep it a mystery. Clauses 1, 
26, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to a saint, his offspring. So when you see that word saint, he's saying his offspring. What makes you a saint? Your good behavior? Not based on works. It's based on his finished work and who you were created in Christ before the foundations of this world. Whole new idea of creation. So once again, for the skeptic that may have not heard these other videos, haven't listened to this whole series, and would stumble upon this one video and judge it, not hearing it, we got to get the text again. So for those who have heard this before, hang in there. Repetition is good for you. We learn things by repetition. we got to unlearn by repetition. So the Spirit gives us over and over and over again. So it's in Galatians chapter 6, verses 15 to 16, for in Christ neither circumcision or uncircumcision avails anything, but a new creation. For as many that walk according to this rule or view, perspective of life, Peace be unto them, and mercy upon the Israel of God. A peace that passes all understanding and misunderstanding. This peace of God has got to come. They gain this view perspective of a creation new to us, not this one we've entered into as a fallen one, which God has, worked, has to work to his good. We get into that in this series. Galatians chapter 3, verse 36. There's neither... Jew nor Greek, they're neither bond nor free, they're neither male nor female, for you are one in Christ Jesus. And we're getting into the oneness. The eternality of the human spirit gets into the matter of our being one. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one. The Son's in the Father, the Father's in the Son. And the Spirit empowers the Father and the Son. And it says, we are in them. John 17. So, these texts. In other words, he was saying, if you want any peace in your life, in our case, this dilemma about male and female, and this transgender movement. So, and so, in other words, he was saying, if you want any peace in your life, in our case, male female relationship, he had better come to understand his view and perspective of life. Second Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, hear that? In Christ. The mind of Christ and being in Christ. Series of videos on that. If you don't understand it, you could ask your father. I'm just going to share with you what he's told me. Yeah, if any man be in Christ, He's a new creature, new creation. Old things are passed away, but behold, all things have become new, new to us. We think we give up some kind of habit, that's what he meant by some becoming new. I don't smoke no more, I don't drink no more, I don't swear no more. I mean, that's good you don't do all that, but that's not what that text is trying to say. This idea of newness is a whole different creation. Based on his finished work, not yours. Romans 8.1 therefore, therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ. What Jesus accomplished. What Jesus manifested. That's why I say are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Your human spirit, you being the offspring of God, being an idea of the flesh of male and female, race, culture, creed, or gender. Ephesians 2.10, for we are his workmanship, not something we created, after our fallen flesh, for we are his workmen, created, manifested 
in Christ Jesus unto good works. Where, where, where did good works come from? Which God had ordained before, had before ordained that we should walk in them, his works. He worked it out. The purpose of God locked up in the quickened human spirit. That's the good work. The purpose of God locked up in the quickened human spirit, Christ, this anointing in us. The glory, hope of glory, glory means God's original intent of our human spirit expressing through a body and a living soul of intellect and emotions and a free will to express these things spiritual in a carnal world by that act of this free will of this living soul in unique ways of character, personalities, positions of this experience. Now, catch this from 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 9. Who has saved past tense? Past completed act, perfect tense from the Greek text. Who hath saved it before the foundations of the world and called us? Many are called, few are chosen. Thank God for those who were chosen to give us this message, like Paul, the prophets and the apostles. But we're all called to hear this. You're a son, you're an offspring of God, who has saved us, restored us back to our sonship who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, your ideas of holiness, you know, but according to his own purpose and grace. Now, when was this given? Which was given, when? In Christ Jesus, before the world began. Ephesians 3.10, to the intent that now into the prince and powers in heavenly places. To hear that? To the intent that now into the prince of powers and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him, Christ's faith, which he also finished before the foundations of this world, what I just said in Second Timothy 1, 9, not the world's idea of faith. We just live by that faith, and live our faith, not by sight. Romans 8, 37, Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors, to him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, principalities, or powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Which is in Him, and we are in Him, and He's in the Father. Powerful Son. Galatians 5, 5, 4, e, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness. How? By faith. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things seen. Remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This is the light that we need, not the light that this world has to offer, which is truly darkness. So, if the light that you got is darkness, how great is that darkness? This world is often darkness. And the wisdom of this world is proving to be foolishness. And the more you begin to see the so-called wisdom of this world, as Solomon said, more wisdom means more grief. And with much knowledge, knowledge is increased, becomes sorrow. Ah, this last church period of the seven churches in the book of Revelation, we're in that last period. 
that thinks itself to be rich when it's clearly said that this last search period will not know that they're not rich, but they're really wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked, needing eyes they have to open their eyes of their spirit and see and hear from the Father, His living Word. I mean, this whole series takes off, and it sounds like the other series I've been putting out. They all, they all overlap one another. And yet, people don't want to see it. That's what I'm saying, you don't have to listen to me. You can go off and listen to the Father. Ask Him, where do you think I'm getting this from? I'm getting it from my Father and your Father. He's the Father of us all. But not all is going to accept this or believe it.